everybody. I'm Keith. I'm here with Black Solutions, and this is a Black Inspirational Spotlight. I'm here with the wonderful Angela White. Uh, how are you doing today? I'm well. Thank you, Keith. Thank you for having me. Thank oh, you for no, letting thank me you be for on Black Solutions. Joining us. Absolutely. For the people who uh, aren't familiar with you, mm -hmm. uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, how you got started in film and producing. Okay. My name is Angela White, and I'm from New Jersey. So I'm not a native of Los Angeles. I uh, started the company Silverline Entertainment back in 1997 in New Jersey as an entertainment company. I've always been driven to entertainment. So I started with music. That's like kind of the natural uh, first step for most people, uh, at least on the East Coast. Mm -hmm. And then once I entered into music, I was introduced to comedians, and then I became a talent manager. Okay. And then through that, I made it to L.A. through talent management because mm -hmm. my comedian started booking TV shows and films. Then I was introduced to the world of producing. And through that, it's always a transition. Right. I, there's always an evolution to everything. And then through that, I became uh, intrigued by being a producer, by being a content producer, about creating a story, being able to tell a story, being able to have an impact on people, something that people can see worldwide. And then I just bit the bug, and I've been producing ever since. Okay. So what drew you to making faith-based movies? Well, I've only done two faith-based movies out of my 30 movies, so I'm not a faith-based producer just mm -hmm. overall. I like to tell good stories. And so for the second one I just did, it, it really what inspired me was Bishop T.D. Jakes. Mm -hmm. I was at the American Black Film Festival in 2016, and he was like, you producers are not serving a complete group of people. Mm -hmm. uh, most of us are doing romantic comedies, thrillers, horrors, mm -hmm. action, but as a people, majority are African Americans are Christians, and we're not producing content for them. So I said, you know what, I need to start looking at some content for that audience mm -hmm. and tap into it. I was very green to the audience, and then a question of faith was birthed. And okay. I was happy to do it because it's inspirational. No matter what people's faith are, people have to believe in some type of power power when mm -hmm. things go bad. And I thought that really could apply to everybody's daily life. So that's why I ended up doing that particular film. Oh, awesome. Okay. Um, let's see. So you were the first African-American woman to produce and release uh, a mass market faith-based movie. Uh, when you found that out, how did you feel about that? Yeah, I was really surprised that in 2017 is when I found out. The mm -hmm. publicist let me know. And I was like, wow, in 2017, we're still breaking barriers. We're still breaking down doors. Right. You, know, you would think that uh, as long as we've been here, mm -hmm. that by now, people would have done everything. And I'm like, wow, we still have a long way to go. And that let me know how important it is to try to continue in that genre. Right. because there's not a lot of people doing it. And there's other people, African-American women, who have done faith-based. Mm -hmm. It's just putting it out in the theaters. Right. Uh, it's mostly male, uh, white dominated. Mm -hmm. And so I think as a whole, we need to still break a lot of barriers. There aren't that many people of color in the faith-based genre mm -hmm. uh, because it's typically uh, white Protestant for most part. Mm -hmm. And I think that I need to help encourage other filmmakers just to look into another genre because there's other people to be served. Yeah, and there's a market that people are missing. It's out a there. complete market. It's a difficult market, though. Mm -hmm. I will be honest, because the Christian market is a little bit more particular about their content than say an action or horror. Right. You know, action or horror, they don't care if you go out partying and drinking <laughs> on the weekend. But you're not going to really lead a faith-based movie, and mm -hmm. you just post it on Instagram. You were at the club. Right. The audience is different. These are people who maybe go to the theater once a year. Oh, wow. These are like your grandmothers. Mm -hmm. this, is the this is the audience that comes to see a faith-based yeah. film. <laughs> and so they're like, we're not coming out unless we mm -hmm. really believe that you right. believe what you're talking about. And they only come out for that faith -based. And they only come, I mean, for the whole year. It was, mm -hmm. it was really crazy when I was touring with The Question of Faith. I was meeting people for the first time and went to the movie theater in five years. I'm wow. like, what? You know, somebody <laughs> like me, I'm at the movie theater once a month. Mm -hmm. I'm like, once in five years? Yeah, because they feel the content is so poor or the content is just against their personal beliefs. Mm -hmm. People really feeling TV's trash now, and film is trash, that audience. And so right. they're like, we're only gonna come out with something family-oriented, mm -hmm. uh, wholesome and good and clean. And so I was like, wow, there's a whole audience who can really put some money mm -hmm. in uh, filmmakers' pockets to help promote their film, to help push it out that we're really not paying attention to. So, But I, it's, it's a great field for somebody to go into. Awesome. Um, so uh, tell us a little bit more about A Question of Faith. Um, what was the inspiration for 
this film? Yeah, Question of Faith was written by Ty Manns, and it was basically, initially, it was written as a story of three people, three different cultures, white, black, uh, and Hispanic, who don't know anything about each other, and then there's a horrific car accident. And so the whole premise is, what would you do if something horrible happens to you, would you lose, or to a loved one, mm -hmm. would you lose your faith at that moment in God? And we told it from a realistic perspective. Uh, whether you're a Christian or you're not, a lot of people do challenge their faith. Right. Especially in hard times. Even <laughs> pastors. Mm -hmm. uh, we're seeing, what, almost five pastors in the last month have committed suicide. Wow. So the, the real deal is that through trials and tribulations, mm -hmm. everybody falls. And it's okay. And we want to show that because some people... Uh, have a belief that you can never fall, that you can never doubt God, that you can never question your faith. It's not true. Everybody questions their faith. Even pastors behind closed doors question their faith. And we want to show that from a realistic perspective, not like, oh, the clouds open up and God came down. It's like, ooh, <laughs> you're saved. You're, right. the, the pain is gone. No. Mm -hmm. If you're hurting, you're hurting. Mm -hmm. And then we showed how you get back to a good place, naturally and organically. So that's why we wanted to tell that story. So this, it's a tough film, mm -hmm. but it's a great film. It's on Netflix right now. Uh, basically, you're gonna, it's going to challenge you. And what would you do? Mm -hmm. and what would you do if somebody harmed you? What would you mm -hmm. do if somebody took away your loved one? What would, somebody, what would you really do? Right. And people say, oh, I forgive, I forgive. Let's be honest. Everybody doesn't forgive like that. And we mm -hmm. show that, that forgiveness is even hard to do. Awesome. And most people, you don't even know what you'll do until you're in Exactly. That because even myself, I'm like, oh, I don't know if I would do that, but mm -hmm. let somebody kill my mother, I don't know what I will do. Right. <laughs> That's just being <laughs> honest. You know, things can transform you mm -hmm. and change you in a way where you don't even know who you are mm -hmm. in a tough situation. It's right. almost like an out of body experience. Wow. That's some some heavy stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's a great film, though. You'll feel inspired at the end, and you also feel that you can overcome anything. So is that what you were hoping to get out of the I, film? Absolutely. We absolutely wanted people to walk away. We deal with racism. Mm -hmm. We deal with uh, organ donation. Uh, we deal also uh, with texting and driving. Mm -hmm. So we were uh, the first faith-based film to screen for members of Congress mm -hmm. in 2017 because of those issues, particularly the racism issue. Mm -hmm. And we really want to show people that there is reconciliation, but there's a process in it. You're just not going to forgive. It's not going to be one, two, three. There is a healing that has to happen. Mm -hmm. And that's why we were invited to uh, Capitol Hill to screen for members of Congress in 2017. First faith-based to ever do that. Usually wow. faith-based films have to be done off the property, mm -hmm. uh, the Capitol grounds, just because of separation of church, church and state. And, state. Yeah. and so this was like a blessing. And the only reason why, honestly, we got in was because mm -hmm. of the racist piece of the film. Oh, wow. And I'm a known Democrat, and it was all Republicans mm -hmm. who signed off for me to be in there. Wow. And so that was a testament, too, that I'm in a certain Senate floor, congressional mm -hmm. floor, as we did our tour. My family and I, my mom's a delegate. And mm -hmm. we're like, wow, we with all these Republicans. Who would have thought? But that's what the movie was supposed to be about. Mm -hmm. People who have different opinions, different ideologies being in the same room. So how was that, and how was it I was received amazing. by them? It was amazing. You know, I, I was blessed to get a lot of great interviews, even with Fox, mm -hmm. which is a very heavily Republican station, mm -hmm. as a result of it, because it taught us all a lesson. Because honestly, everybody's the same. Oh, yeah. When you like break it all down, and you know, at one point we were even in the rotunda room, mm -hmm. and I was just talking to two congressmen. I was like, let's just really just talk. You know, at that point right. it's late at night. They're giving mm -hmm. us a tour off and the record. Off the and, record. And yeah. then when you really just start talking, a lot of times people it's miscommunication, or mm -hmm. people have never experienced somebody like mm -hmm. you. Right. And so you can have a real intelligent conversation, and still be for the same goal, which is the country, mm -hmm. but two different thinking on how to get there to approach it. So it was great, uh, I think, education for all of us. Uh, Washington Journal did a whole uh, article on it like, a couple wow. of days afterwards because we had so many different cultures together. Mm -hmm. And we even had Muslims there. We had, of course, people who were Jewish, you know, different faiths. Mm -hmm. And we're all in the same room. And we were all good. Wow. No political issues, uh, no racism, and that's really what the goal is, right, for the mm -hmm. country. But I think a lot of times people do pretenses and mm -hmm. for uh, grandstanding, so you have to kind of get behind closed doors to really talk. Right. 
and get people on common ground. Yeah, no cameras around and just be people because we're all people. Mm -hmm. If you're a parent, you want the same thing for your child. Doesn't mm -hmm. matter who you are. So it was a great experience, at least for me too, because I always had a jaded view of a lot of politicians. Mm -hmm. And I understand now it's a business. You know, it's a business. You know, the person you see on the camera, uh, we're about to come up to an election year, mm -hmm. right? The person you see on the camera, uh, politicking, is probably not really the person that's home with their family. Mm -hmm. Two different people, it's like a mask. <laughs> What advice can you give to uh, future and current filmmakers who are trying to find their way into the film industry? Yeah, I started a school, Backstage Pass to the Movie Industry, okay. last year online just for that, mm -hmm. just to help bridge the gap because mm -hmm. we, we still don't have a clear seat at the table. Right. Uh, we have more seats at the table, even with Tyler then, Perry mm -hmm. opening up the studio, but let's be clear, we don't really have as a group of people a clear seat at the table. Mm -hmm. And so the only way to do that, we have to pay it forward. We have to give opportunities to people to show resource, share resources and knowledge. So I started the school because I wanted to give the real deal of the business. Mm -hmm. Not the show part, because we know how to sing, dance, and act, mm -hmm. and do all that in front of the camera. But do we know how to hold the light? Do we know how to write the story? Are we owning the building? That's what I wanted to teach. So what I tell every filmmaker, First, know the business. Understand mm -hmm. this is a business, like the politician. It's a mask in yeah. front of the camera. <laughs> understand this is a business, because once you understand this is a business, your craft and your gift will follow you, mm -hmm. right? The craft, you already have the gift, yeah. but you want to make sure you create the environment for the gift to flourish. So mm -hmm. basically, that's what Tyler Perry did. He had the gift, but now he created an environment. Nobody can tell him what to do. Nobody can tell him what to write. He right. can shoot whatever he wants, and then you have to pay him if you want to shoot at his place. Mm -hmm. That's that's really where we need to go. So I tell every filmmaker, understand the business, take business classes, mm -hmm. understand contracts. Uh, these are things that people are like, well, why do I have to know that? I'm a writer. Because yeah. you're going to have to sign a contract. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to do a distribution deal. And this those thing. are the parts that yeah. a lot of people miss. I went to film school, and mm -hmm. you know, they taught us the production side. Right. But the business side, when I got into that, it was... Like if somebody gave you a contract right now, you'd probably be like, I don't know, you just <laughs> might sign it. Right. And you might have signed away two, three years of something mm -hmm. and had no, had no idea. idea. That's what happened with Sammy Davis Jr. That's what happened with Richard Pryor. Unfortunately, you know, some of our greats have passed away with not a dime in their bank account. And so I tell filmmakers, understand the business part of it. The craft will come. You can mm -hmm. always learn the craft, and you can get the experience of the craft. I tell people to intern. Before I became a full-fledged producer, I was working under producers for years. Mm -hmm. I never wanted to step out as a producer. I didn't want to be responsible for the money. <laughs> you're responsible for the crew. You're responsible mm -hmm. for the cast. It's a huge responsibility. Oh, yeah. And I'd rather just take a back seat at first and mm -hmm. just learn. I'm glad I did, because when I did finally step out, I had no, no idea what I was getting into. Because it always looks easy from the outside looking in. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I can put that movie together and <laughs> whip all these people. And then when you're in the hot seat, it's mm -hmm. hot. You get behind the scenes. It's and hot. Ooh. Right. And then I realized, okay, me, uh, I, had a I have a lawyer background. So mm -hmm. me understanding contracts played a huge role. Uh, me, under that's where I started in business affairs mm -hmm. uh, at a law school. So then that played a huge role. I'm able to understand all the contracts, understand right. the guilds, the unions. Then I started learning the craft. Mm -hmm. And I'm more of a student, so I wanted to learn all about quit. So I did production coordinator for a whole year in 2006. Oh, wow. You want to see these credits anywhere, I kind of removed them. Mm -hmm. But I'm glad I did that because I wanted to learn all the inner workings of a production. And I tell people, people want to just be a producer right away. Like, mm -hmm. start at the bottom sometime because yeah. it's not an ego thing. Mm -hmm. You'll learn more. So when I was a production coordinator, that's when you learn everything because you touch every department. Mm -hmm. So I, I really wanted to understand what I was getting into because I didn't want to be a person that always has to work for somebody. Right. Ultimately, I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur and work mm -hmm. for myself. That's why I started my company. So I always tell filmmakers, take some business classes, have mentors. Mentors are huge. Mm -hmm. I still have mentors to this day. If I don't know something, I, I need to have somebody to call. Because mm -hmm. you're not going to know everything. Yeah, Look, Tyler Perry didn't know everything. Mentors. Yeah, yeah he's, he's where he is because he had huge mentors mm -hmm. like Oprah. So you always need the mentorship. And, and you need to also be humble in the sense of understanding this is a journey. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody wants to get there like right away. It's a journey. It's okay if it takes 10 years mm -hmm. because there's nobody that's overnight. There's nobody. Yeah. All right. Um, so what is it about your career that you enjoy the most? I think I enjoy the most uh, working with other people, the new filmmakers coming up. I'm in my 40s, and I think at this point, uh, seeing the new millennials, the 20s, 
generation, I call the 20s generation, they're doing things that are totally different. Like, we, I didn't have social media coming up. We didn't have really internet the same way coming up. Right. We didn't even have cell phones the same way coming up. Everything's been different. When I was in the music business, we were doing two ways. <laughs> so everything has evolved. And so the new generation is just killing it. You know, they're creating content on their cell phone that's mm -hmm. better than some of the stuff coming out in these theaters. Yeah. And this is just real talk stuff. So I love learning from them and then at the same time being inspired by it. Because the the difference of experience and the more creative group that's a little bit more, I call rebellious, mm -hmm. is the experience can help t um, bring it in, hone it. Mm -hmm. Whereas the creative can help flourish and break ground. Mm -hmm. And so it's a nice combination. Yeah, and that's, that's a good balance because a lot of people kind of uh, try to reject the younger oh, coming no. up people sometimes. If you, so. you if you don't have anybody young working mm -hmm. for you, you're in trouble because you're not going to know the trends. Mm -hmm. You're not going to even know where we're going. Right. Uh, if you're still doing stuff with people that are only you know a certain age group, you're, it's, it's a wrap. Mm -hmm. Every company has to hire those millennials because they know everything that's happening. On they know the terminology, the tone, and they're creating the culture. Mm -hmm. Right now, people on the internet are creating the future, whether people want to admit it or not. People brands follow some groups on oh, internet yeah. just like oh what's the new word to mm -hmm. say what's the new hashtag because that's what's happening all right well, are you working on any future projects that you can tell us about yeah i just wrapped my directorial debut so i'm always evolving as well so mm -hmm. now i'm getting into directing it's called transgress mm -hmm. uh, we just wrapped that in june and we're going to do the film festival circuit next year i also oh, nice. wrote it uh, then I just wrapped Pump as a TV show. Mm -hmm. uh, we're Urban Flix TV, a new network, and it stars Ray J, Michael J. White, uh, Jennifer Freeman, McKinley uh, okay. Freeman as well. And um, it's directed and written by Corey Grant, a, a great uh, filmmaker. And so we just wrapped that TV, TV mm -hmm. show uh, basically about a month and a half ago. And then I start shooting my uh, probably deepest project in Atlanta next month called Hands Up, which is a social commentary piece. Mm -hmm. And it's like paying homage to Mike Brown. And that project is really good. Uh, all we can say about it right now is we start in 1855, uh -huh. and we bring it all the way up to 2020. Up. <laughs> we bring it all the way up. So we're going to Atlanta, Georgia, to actually shoot on real plantations. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm not one that's big on slave pieces, but I'm like, if I'm going to do it, we're going to do it with a message. And that will come out next year, because next year is election year, and everybody has mm -hmm. a voice. Mm -hmm. But our voice will be told through film. OK, definitely looking forward to that. Yeah. Hands up. So. Um, where can uh, people find you and stay connected with you yeah. on social media? Everywhere, I'm Miss Angela White, M.S. Angela White. Instagram, uh, Facebook, Twitter. My website is Miss Angela White. You know, I, I teach about branding. and So one name, find me everywhere. YouTube, everywhere. Miss Angela White. Awesome. Well, thank you for joining thank us you, today. Keith. Thank you. Thank you, Keith. Thank you, Chris. Thank, Bla thank you, Black Solutions. It's been awesome. Thank you for tuning in to another Black Solutions, Black Inspirational Spotlight. Be sure to follow and subscribe to us on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube at Black Solutions. And please visit our website at blacksolutionsmedia.com uh, for our latest content. Thank you. See you next time.